Hello and welcome to the Raspberry Pi coding channel, a channel where we focus on the coding and networking side of Raspberry Pis. In this video, we're going to briefly talk about static IPs and the issue presented if we wish to host something on our Raspberry Pi but can't have a static IP for one reason or another. Before we get into this though, I just want to raise to your attention my Patreon account. If you wish to access content early, get one-to-one -one support, suggest content, access to scripts I've written, or if you'd just like to say thanks, please do visit my Patreon account. Onwards then, starting with the main users of the internet and how that looks. So as you'll already know, users of the internet tend to be consumers and they don't really care less what their public IP is, which therefore makes sense that your IP address on your router, the public one, isn't static by default. Your IP address can change whenever your router is switched off, reset or otherwise disconnected from the internet. This is more efficient for the internet and it is, like I say, not a problem for the vast majority. For some of us though, it is a problem. For those like you and me, uh, who I'm making an assumption there, who want to host content on their Raspberry Pi, let's say for example, a website, and they're faced with the issue that their IP address, their public IP address might change. It's a big problem and this is why. So moving from left to right in this diagram, we've got the Raspberry Pi, which we'll assume here is hosting a website. And it's connected to the router through our local network via a internal or local IP. The router will have been modified to accommodate the traffic going through it by poking a hole in the NAT firewall. And therefore your traffic from your Raspberry Pi will be going out to the world, essentially to the internet, and it will be exposed via a public IP. That public IP is then uh, an address that can allow us to access the website. And in fact, if you visited a, uh, a browser and typed in the public IP, you would get the website. But of course, that's not really how things work. Um, normally, you would type in a URL and that would give you the website. Now, this mapping between URL and IP is done by something called a DNS server, which is this block here. It carries statically defined relationships between the URL, the domain, and the IP address. So the reason this is red here is that what happens if the IP, the public IP, were to suddenly change? The problem, of course, is, well, it's a few things. Firstly, if the IP has changed, uh, I, and I don't know what it is, I, I couldn't type in the IP address to access the website, if that is what I wanted to do. But most people access it through a URL, but the problem is still the same. The settings in the DNS server, which map URL to IP, are, are basically hard-coded, they're fixed. So since the IP has changed, the information relating URL to IP is no longer valid. And so when you visit the URL, you'll get an error. Or even worse, you might end up going to somebody else's website. So that's the problem with an IP that can suddenly change, and that's known as dynamic IP. And as I've just mentioned, it is the default for most people. So if you do have a dynamic IP, your obvious way around this is just to update your DNS settings. So here is an example. Before a router is reset, a URL could be equal to an IP such as this given here. And then when the router is reset, the IP changes. So what we then have to do is we have to go into the DNS settings and update the IP so that yet again, the URL matches the IP address. Everything would be fine if we did that. Of course, the problem with this is it could be many minutes, even hours and potentially days after the IP has changed before we get round to updating the details on the server. And as such, there's a chance that the system will have been down and people will have visited it in that time. So really, that's no good. So, of course, to solve this problem, the obvious thing to do is to get a static IP. If you're a business customer of an ISP, this will come as standard. If you're lucky enough to have an ISP who don't charge for it, then you can just request one. But for many of us, me included, I had to pay a small fee to get my static IP set up. It was £5 and I was with the company for three years. So it worked out at £1.66 per year. Throw away money. 
and therefore I would recommend this is what you do to save you the hassle. But if for whatever reason you can't or won't, out of principle perhaps, get a static IP through your ISP, you still do have two solutions. The second one on the screen is the one that we're going to explore. The first one is dynamic DNS. This is quite an established approach. If you have a router that supports this, you can configure it to interface with a third party provider, one which you may have to pay for, though there are free plans available, and they will manage the changes in your public IP when it happens and still allow your URL to work. The issue I have with that is that it does involve another third party in your hosting chain, which I prefer to avoid. I also couldn't show you how to do this because every router is different. Not all routers support DDNS is also an issue. And like I say, you may have to pay for the service in some cases. So I prefer option two, the custom solution using Cloudflare. So we're just going to have a quick talk about what that is. So I've mentioned already that the issue is that your public IP can change here. And that means the association between URL and public IP will be wrong when it happens. I've already mentioned that you could manually change the IP address to what it's changed to, and that will fix the problem. But you have to manually do it, you have to know it's happened, and there can be a big delay. So, the kind of DIY workaround is to have a script on the same server which is hosting your services, or it could be another server, but it makes sense for it to be the Raspberry Pi. And that script is listening for when the IP changes. And when it changes, you then go over automatically to the DNS settings and you update them. Thus, you're never more than a few seconds um, where your service wouldn't be available. This necessarily then introduces a recipe for what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing the following. Get the current public IP of our home network. Compare the current to previous IP. And if it's different, update the IP in the DNS settings, in this case, on Cloudflare. It's a simple recipe and it's clearly just dying for automation in a script. So we're going to be looking at the technical solution in the next video. But in this video, I just wanted it to be really clear that this is what you end up coming to. It's a natural conclusion. Uh, it's something I, I've just, I mean, I'm sure lots of people do this, but it's something that just came to me when I thought about it. It's, it's a straightforward thing to do. Now it's made even easier for us because Cloudflare offer an API, which allows us to constructively and easily change the DNS settings in Cloudflare. So all we need to do is write a script that detects the IP has changed and then go to Cloudflare's DNS settings through the API and make the appropriate change in multiple places. And I'll be talking you through all of that in the next video. So I hope you found this useful. Please do like and subscribe if you have and please do visit my Patreon account if you'd like. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.